Shut up and sit down. Oh, hello and welcome to a North Wales side by side video. This is the fifth set of tyres I've had on the front of this car since I bought it 16 months ago. I used the Bridgestones when it first came out of the uh, showroom and then I went on to PS71 Kumos and they've been a really really good tyre. They're a little bit softer than the Bridgestones, don't last as long but the grip in the wet and the grip in the dry is so much better. But this time I've decided because of the price of the 215 4018s I'd go and match the tyre size on the GR Yaris and I've gone to the 225 4018s said Bynes, making a small mental note Little update on my Yaris GR Sport. I've got 26,676 miles on it now and today I hit a rather nasty pothole. Couldn't avoid it, I had a car going down the other side of the road but I hit it quite hard and I damaged my passenger side front tyre took an absolutely enormous chunk out of it admittedly in about a thousand miles I was due a set of tyres anyhow but this has forced me to do something that I've wanted to do for quite a long time so I've been out today and I've bought four brand spanking new Kumo PS71s but I've gone up a I've gone up a size I haven't put 215 4018s back on the car I've gone 225 4018 And there's a good reason for doing that. Not only have I got a wider tyre, the 225s are considerably cheaper by a rather large amount. If I was going to put 215 4018s on the car, it would have stood me £420 to replace the four tyres. £420, that's what, the, that's what they would have cost me to replace. The 225 4018s for all four £360. That's quite a saving. big chunk of money and the reason for that is 225 is a more common tyre size meaning they sell more meaning the cost of the tyre is less so anybody out there that's wondering now about ride quality because these GR Sports are hard, especially on uneven roads, the, the suspension is rock hard. There's not a lot of sidewall on a 40 profile tyre, so they ride really, really hard. I've made it worse. The ride quality now is even more skittish. 
it's even harder. If ride quality is something that bothers you, don't buy a GR Sport. Because as you probably just noticed there, that was a really rough pasture road and it bobbles about quite a lot. There's no compliancy in the tyres. And these have just made it worse. They've made it even harder. It's not something that's actually going to bother me at all. Because I think this is one of the best handling front wheel drive chassis on the market in this format of car as in super mini. It's got a cracking chassis and if you want a car that handles really really well there's always going to be compromises with ride quality. So it's not going to bother me one little bit because I'm hearing more on the performance and the handling side than I am chasing economy. As long as this thing does 50 to the gallon as an average, I don't give a monkeys. I'm happy with that. They don't rub. And I've checked the speedometer against my GPS speedometer. And when the speedometer says I'm doing 50, GPS says I'm doing 48. When the speed up says I'm doing 70, GPS says I'm doing 68. So it's not a massive discrepancy on the speedo to GPS. So if you go through a speed camera in a 50 zone at 50, you're actually doing 48 miles an hour and you're safe. So I'll leave that one with you, 225 make the car even more skittish and harder and coarser but the only thing they're going to do is improve the grip. Anyhow, thanks for watching, please consider liking the video, please consider subscribing, thank you very much. Everybody's wondering what the discrepancy between the speedometer and your actual speed is going up to the 225. We're doing 47 miles an hour and it's 45 on the GPS. There's a two mile an hour discrepancy which was the same as the 215. So 50 mile an hour is an actual true 48 miles an hour.